Hey folks, Quill18 here and welcome to Let's Try Pinball Arcade. Pinball Arcade is another virtual pinball game that has just made it onto Steam. Now we recently covered Pinball FX2, which is also known as Zen Pinball, depending on what platform you get it on. And uh, the Pinball Arcade, they've been trying to get on Steam for quite some time. Uh, this game has been available on tablets and console games for quite a long time. Uh, I've owned this on my PlayStation 3 for a while and I really, really enjoy it. Now, the big difference between Pinball Arcade and Pinball FX2 is that pinball effects are, I don't know, they're, they're sort of made up tables, they're imaginary tables, um, just for the game. Whereas Pinball Arcade, every single table in here is actually a real world pinball table that has been licensed for the game, and there are a lot to choose from. So, uh, there are most of the really classic pinball tables that people really, really love. Medieval Madness, Monster Bash, Good Ones, Mars Attacks is a good example, No Good Gophers, Ripley's Believe It or Not, considered to be, you know, most of these are considered to be some of the best pinball tables ever ever made and these are really faithful adaptations of that so the difference between pinball arcade and pinball fx2 is pinball fx they sort of just make up their own they might license something they have a lot of x-man games for example uh, but the tables are not real tables whereas these are now those have both pros and cons one if you're on a computer there's an argument to be made about well let's just take advantage of the fact that we're on a computer and make pinball tables that are you know, wider than normal or have special effects that you couldn't actually do in a real world pinball table. On the other hand, people, uh, and, and pinball players are, are very fanatical lots. Um, and, and there's a big appeal to have something that is a good and proper real copy of a real pinball table that has been beloved by many people for a really, really long time. Um, and anyway, that's what Pinball Arcade does. Now, Pinball Arcade is a free download on Steam. Um, how do I actually back out with the, there we go. It is a free download on Steam and comes with exactly one table for you. It comes with Tales of the Arabian Nights, which is actually a, a really fun table. Now, personally, not my favorite, and I actually have a really hard time with it. I'm more of a theater of magic kind of guy. But here on uh, Steam, I only own, well, the one free game. And um, I might pick up some of the ones, especially the ones I don't have on my PlayStation already. I might go ahead and pick up on Steam. We'll see how it goes. There are not a, a very large uh, variety of options in terms of graphics. Um, you get to pick your resolution and, and change maybe the ball reflection and anti-aliasing. That's pretty much all. And that really shows the fact that it's basically just a console port. Now, I also have this game on my Mac. The Mac and PC versions are pretty samey, and both of them, I'm going to say, are not quite as slick as the tablet or console versions, which are both really, really good. That being said, 90% of my complaints about Pinball Arcade are resolved just by getting a controller and plugging it into your computer. If you're playing mouse and keyboard, it's not quite as smooth as an experience as it could be, but if you've got an Xbox 360 controller or basically any other controller kicking around that you can plug in, in using USB onto your computer, you're gonna have a much, much better time. So let's uh, jump into Tales of Arabian Nights and, and give a talk about that. So, yeah, so this is a, a real world pinball table. You could potentially find this table out there in the real world and play it. Um, Arabian Nights is not necessarily, uh, it's a very interesting table. It's not necessarily the greatest table ever made, uh, but it's certainly one of the most interesting real world tables with a cool feature in the middle with the, uh, the lamp that can spin around in a very fun way. Uh, under game setup, you basically just get to control the number of players. This is all, you know, local hot seat. So player one will go, and then when he loses his ball, passes the controller on to player two, then, you know, player three, four, five, however many you happen to have. Um, the, uh, th that works pretty well. I have no complaints. It's actually quite fun to do, and you compare your, your various scores. Uh, the table menu, this is where you can look up the instructions. A lot of people who are new to pinball, I just think that pinball is all about, you know, just flipping the ball as many times as you can without losing it. Um, but in fact, these tables tend to have lots and lots of things going on them. Uh, and um, different shots are worth wildly different amounts of points. A lot of tables have different modes that you can enter, and then you have a specific set of goals to achieve during that mode, to complete the mode, and score major points. So uh, once you get a little bit familiar with the controls, you're going to actually want to take a look at the instructions there to get a good sense of how things work and what shots you should be looking at, you know, what's worth the most points, how do you get extra balls, how do you trigger multi-ball, which is always really valuable, that sort of thing. Uh, and of course, there's the leaderboard, so you can see, you know, 
who's the best at everything. Let's go ahead and get this started. So if you're using a, a mouse and keyboard, now the buttons can be rebound to a certain extent, uh, but the default are the left and right shift for your flippers, and also table nudging, which is def by default mapped to WASD. So I can you know just nudge it to the left or to the right. Now, if you nudge it too much, you do get that danger. And on most tables, uh, you get uh, two dangers, and the third danger is actually going to be a tilt, where the table basically just turns off and eats your ball. Um, so you've got to be, you can't nudge the table too much. And most people, again, who are new at pinball, don't realize that, that nudging the table is a it is a major important part of pinball gameplay because there's a lot of times the ball will be going and it's going to go and it's going to fall to the left over here and just drain out or it's going straight down the middle where you can't flip it and it's important to just nudge the table just a little so that the ball will hit that. I actually have a pinball uh, table in my basement here and that's like really one of the things. I got to make sure there's enough room on all sides of the pinball table so that we can give it a good nudge from time to time but not so much that you upset the tilt sensor or you know break the table which is why there's a tilt sensor in there in the first place. Okay so keyboard you got your shift buttons and then for the plunge you can actually pull the plunger back with the mouse which is kind of fun but again I much much prefer using my Xbox 360 controller in which case the left and right triggers are used for the flipper which I think is fantastic the left uh, stick the analog joystick is used to nudge the table and what's nice about that is you can have a little bit more finesse in how you nudge uh, in terms of both direction and strength. The right analog stick is then used to control the plunger. Oops, I accidentally plunged, but I happened to get the skill shot, so that makes me happy. A general strategy when you're playing pinball, if you're new to the table, is aim for anything that's flashing. Um, sometimes aiming for things that are lit are good, other times things that are lit are actually something you've already done you don't have to worry about it now one of the things i find with pinball arcade here is that at least on the pc is some of these uh these lighted areas don't light up properly you can see there's weird kind of artifacting going on there oh so this shoot again uh you'll notice once i drain this ball which probably won't take very long because i'm really bad at the uh, tales of arabian nights this shoot again when it lights up it seems like it almost like jitters back and forth really weird sort of texturing issues i'm currently playing at 1600 by 900 resolution and i, I can't imagine even though that's a non-standard resolution just works out really well for my recording i can't imagine that there's any sort of resolution dependency in these sort of 3d effects um other than that the uh, the lighting model is not not terrible, not great. I think that uh, it, it could feel like there's a bit more ambient occlusion. I mean, we are on a PC here. You can probably uh, give us a little bit more graphic fidelity than this. More actual shadows, more actual ambient occlusion. Uh, I feel like you could just do a better job there. This lighting model looks great on my uh, my Android tablet. I, I think it's fantastic. The game runs great there. It also runs great on my PlayStation 3. And the graphics are probably as good as I expect on a PlayStation 3, but on this PC, I would really like if they gave some extra options for visual stuff because a lot of pinball is about the beautiful lighting, the beautiful colors, the beautiful textures, and um, I think the PC version could use a little bit of love. The Mac version, which is available on the Mac App Store, is basically the same thing. Um, so anyway, let's let's go and take a few shots and see what we can do. Let's see if we can hit the genie. Oh, I missed the genie, but I got the lamp, which I love that shot. Like that's that's really the big draw to this table is. Um, is being able to hit that lamp and uh, have it spin. It's got it's got a bit of a motor in there. Like it's got a sensor that when you hit the uh, the things that gets it swinging. I don't think it's all just like the ball's momentum that is getting things to go there. I don't think I'm actually hitting any targets up there. Oh yeah, there's that cool ball trap over there, which is neat. There's some ramps. You you can tell once we go up these ramps, um, the ball. The ball is kind of floaty. I mean, that's kind of present all over the table, but it's certainly present there on the uh, the ramps as well. Uh, they seem to have like a weird anti-gravity effect that I've always found in Pinball Arcade. Uh, pinball FX or Pinball uh, Zen Pinball, which are basically the same game, uh, don't seem to suffer from that same part, uh, that same kind of problem. Now, since I've actually developed a bit of a pinball game on my own, I realized that the physics in pinball game are very hard for a computer to deal with, and especially when you're designing a game that has to run on tablets, which are very weakly powered, and frankly, even consoles. You know, the PlayStation 3 is not a slouch. Oh, there's the cool magnet effect there right in front of the uh, the genie. Um, the, uh, the PlayStation 3 is not a slouch, but it's not a computer. I mean, the, these console gamers have no idea what true 
true computing power is. You know, uh, the average computer that's you know newer than five years old is going to have more CPU power than the PlayStation does, um, except you know for really weird edge cases because it's kind of specialized hardware. Um, anyway, all that uh, comes together to mean that Pinball Arcade here has a relatively simplified. You know what I just realized? My uh... oh, there we go. That's why we're not getting a lot of the effects. I had the uh, the D and D screen turned off. Um, so the, the physics model is very simplified in Pinball Arcade here. And it means the ball is a little bit floaty, goes a little bit slow, and also the flippers, um, I'll try to demonstrate it here as soon as I can get the ball. Uh, you'll notice, like, if I let go of the flipper, it, it almost sort of instantly teleports one way to the other. Um, I don't know if that's actually true, but I think it mostly is. You know, it doesn't... It's got a little bit of a bounce effect when you release it all the way, but I think that's just a visual effect. I don't think the flipper really sort of like slowly comes back uh, in a satisfactory way. So all in all, the, the pinball physics are simplified. Now, that being said, they are fine. They work, they're consistent, um, and also it means that they don't have to worry about uh, the pinball, oops, there we go, failed that one. They don't have to worry about the pinball simulation running wildly different on different computers, you know, between a tablet and a computer, uh, just because the uh, the ability of the physics engine to keep up in terms of CPU power is different, because then they'd have to, like, tweak the physics for every uh, platform. They have to change, you know, exactly, you know, the, maybe the angle of the ramps or, or something else. So I think there's a lot of behind the scenes cheating with the physics, uh, but it ends up working. So. If you are just a regular sort of gamer person who maybe has a passing interest in pinball, I can't endorse Pinball Arcade as the number one pick. Uh, Zen Pinball is probably, or I keep saying that, it's because it's called Zen Pinball on some platforms and it's called Pinball Effects 2 on others. Um, anyway, it's a, it's a long story. Um, that to me is a probably more noob-friendly pinball environment. One of the other reasons, too, is because these are reproductions of real-world world pinball tables, and real-world pinball tables were designed to eat quarters. So they are, um, they are hard. They're really hard. And you tend to just drain a lot, and, like, it can be, it can be frustrating to a new player because you're like, oh, great, I played for 10 seconds and I've lost my ball. Oh, there's another ball at 10 seconds, and then another ball 10 seconds later, and, wow, 30 seconds, my entire game is over. Go me. Uh, it makes you feel kind of crummy. Now, with practice, you can certainly get there, and a big part of it is um, getting better at just, you know, understanding where the physics flow is. Oh, oh, the other thing is I really recommend locking your camera. So, um, again, if I'm on my, uh, my Xbox controller, B will change camera modes. I think there's, I can't remember what the hotkey on the keyboard is. Um, the other thing is if I hit X, like right now I've got a locked camera. If I hit X, I'll unlock it. So now I'm unlocked in camera mode one, which is normal. And you'll see here when I shoot the ball, the camera will actually follow the ball. And for uh, visual things, like a cinematic kind of sense, it's much stronger. Uh, but I find that it actually makes the game much harder to play because I'm having a hard time really being able to predict the motion of the ball. Um, also, this low angle works out really visually, but I like a slightly higher angle, which is camera angle too. And then I like to hit uh, X to lock the camera so that it doesn't move around. I lose some of the cool visuals, but it means I can really predict what the hell the ball is doing because it goes, oh, I've locked the ball, cool. So um, I'm really not paying attention to what my shots are, but theoretically, if I could lock two more balls, it would start a multi-ball. Um, so yeah, so with, but with Zen Pinball or Pinball FX, this, these are not, those are not real world tables in that game. So, um, hey, they tend to be like more oddball, uh, but at the same time, even though I'm not convinced that uh, Pinball FX has a better graphics engine than Pinball Arcade. For all I know, Pinball Arcade has a better one. But because Pinball FX isn't trying to... Um, isn't having to simulate a real-world table, they can come up with a design, a color scheme, a lighting scheme that just works better with what they've got. And because they aren't designed to eat your quarters, you get quite a lot of play out of one ball. In fact, if you're quite good, you can play uh, almost indefinitely on some of the tables between getting extra balls and a very generous uh, tilt mechanic. You're not going to get a lot of dangerous, dangerous reset after a certain amount of time on Pinball Effects. Um, so I think Pinball Effects is much more friendly. Also, the price of this game is... Uh, of Pinball Arcade is pretty rough. Again, this game is free, and uh, this table here, uh, Tales of Arabian Nights, is free. But after that, the... Uh, individual table packs. I think it's about five dollars. Hey! Multi-ball. Um, I think it's about five dollars 
to get a table pack, which is going to include two or three tables or something like that. You can also get all the Season 1 tables for $30. There's also a Season 2 that's out there. I don't know if Season 2 is complete yet. Um, I think you can get a Season Pass, and then uh, as they continue to add tables to Season 2, you will get those. Now, most of the really, really good tables that have ever existed, frankly, are part of the Season 1 pack. And actually, what I'm going to have to do is exit this game and see if the Season 2 pack is simply cheaper or not, because while Season 2's got plenty of tables, to me, they're not the ones that are particularly appealing. I mean, Monster Bash is great. Uh, Medieval Madness is great. Star Trek is great. Attack from Mars is fantastic. You know, it's just like table after table of just solid, amazing, top-notch winning tables. And that's all in Season 1. And if you like pinball at all, playing $30 to get unlimited pinball play on the greatest pinball tables ever made is a no-brainer. And I mean, I know, as, as gamers, as Steam gamers, we are, we are skewed, right? For $30, we're like, well, $30 during a Christmas sale, that's going to get you 15 games or something on Steam, right? Um, but $30 is, A, it's actually not that much money. And you know, it's, it's really good. I mean, think about it. Uh, at a quarter of play. This is what people used to do. They used to play a quarter for a single play of these pinball games. Uh, and uh, you could drain it quite quickly. So, you know, it's all like, what does valuation mean, right? On a PC, paying 30 bucks on Steam for a game that's not like the latest AAA title is weird. On the other hand, if you're talking about a tablet, paying more than 99 cents for a game is, is bizarre, right? Humans, humans are really weird in what we're willing to pay for things. Um, Tale of the 40 Thieves, Escape on the Flying Carpet. I do, I mean, there's great, that, I, I was not paying attention there. Um, there's great music in, on this table, there's great voice acting, and again, part of the reason that the tables here in Pinball Arcade are probably slightly more pricey than uh, Pinball FX is because they're all licensed. Um, it costs a fair amount of money for them to get the rights. Uh, a lot of times what they've done is actually used a Kickstarter to be able to get enough funding to uh, get the rights in the first place. Um, and then that's just sort of get the paperwork resolved. And then it takes a long time for them to be able to duplicate the, the table with perfect fidelity. That's the other thing. If you're designing a table for the computer game, but you're not having to go with something, then you, you know, you boot a ramp and then you're like, oh, you know, the ball's not quite working quite ripe on this ramp. It's too steep. It's too... Um, it's too whatever, so you just move it. Uh, but you can't do that in Pinball Arcade because it's got to be exactly where it is in the real world to look right. And I think that's part of the other reason they've uh, faked some of the physics is because um, what works really well in terms of positioning things in the real world is not necessarily ideal for computerized physics. So they're having to, you know, fake things every now and again. But overall, they're very fun. And Pinball Arcade, if you're a sort of person who likes to play you know, more hardcore games, right? If you like roguelikes, if you like hardcore, what's it, maso... I can't remember the term for it. Masocore platformers, like really hardcore platformers, then frankly, Pinball Arcade is going to be way better for you because it does not hold your hand. Anyway, let's, uh, let, let me cut out of this game. And, uh, let's go and take a look at some of the other tables. Again, we'll look, we'll look at Season 1 and just double check on your pricing for you. Um, Black Hole is really cool. It's got a sub-table that's really weird. Black Knight, again, another classic thing. You can try any one of these for free. So let's go ahead and... Uh, I really like Monster Bash. This is actually one of my favorite ones on the... Uh, so, so you can buy the Table Pack 3 for 5 bucks, um, which will include the Table of Gorgar and Monster Bash. And mostly you're paying $5 for Monster Bash in this case. Or yeah, the, uh, the Season 1 Table Pack for 30 which is probably what I'm going to do. $22 gets you that. Just out of curiosity, how much does the Season 2 cost? Um, season 2 is $40. Wow. Now, not everything has been released yet, but to me, this is, this is a much weaker set of tables. Um, yeah, to me, it, it seems much, much weaker. Uh, let me go back over here. Monster Bash. I love this game on my PlayStation, so let's go ahead and play the trial version over here at this point. Boom, boom, boom. So Monster Bash is a very cool theme. It's uh, the classic the classic Hollywood monsters. You've got Dracula, Frankenstein, um, the creature from the Black Lagoon, um, Bride of Dracula, that sort of thing, and you're all getting together. you got to form the band. 
and go on tour. It's like a rock and roll monster theme. It's just like brilliant and beautiful and hilarious. Excellent music, excellent voice acting, and quite a lot of fun to play. Uh, I believe that this is relatively similar to both um, Mars Attacks God, and Medieval Madness. I think there's a lot of uh, reused elements. If I'm recalling my history, I might be comp getting confused about which game was which. Um, but all three of them will play semi-similarly similarly in some ways. Um, but the thing is, those the, those are all examples of some of the best tables ever made. And uh, reusing a few elements here and there, but with a different theme, is actually not so bad. Um, it's so much fun. I love this mode. Oh yeah, right, there's the mummy as well, which is the, uh, the pop bumpers. And anyway, I really enjoy this table quite a bit. So you can play uh, the free trial on any table. Uh, what they do is they stop you once you reach a certain amount of points. And, uh, and then they're like, oh, are you, maybe you should be buying this game. Very same model as uh, Pinball FX. Right, very, very similar there. And again, the, uh, I, have, I have to have it turned relatively low for the recordings for a variety of different reasons, but give this game a try. I mean, the trial download is free on Steam. Uh, you're gonna be amazed by the sound and the music and the shots are really interesting. There's really cool stuff to do. And anyway, I love pinball, so I, I can't, I can't hide my love for these games. And I know that I'm gonna be spending money on the uh, the season one pack. Uh, no doubt about it. Hell, I'll probably spend money on the season two pack, even though I'm not convinced the tables are as good. I just like pinball that much. And frankly, season one plus season two, that's pretty much the same as just uh, paying for a regular AAA game. And to me, I'll probably put more hours into this. Oh, I keep screwing up the lighting. Uh, I'll put more hours into this than any, you know, Call of Duty or Battlefield ever. That's, like, there's no doubt about it. Hell, I'll probably put more hours into this than I do Skyrim. Uh, I think I already have on my PlayStation, actually. So, anyway, that's, that's the look at this game. Yeah. Oh, I nudged it the wrong way. Damn it. Uh, do check it out. It's on Steam. And again, if you've got a uh, if you've got a tablet, um, it's these pinball games are really really good on tablets. Um, they're also available on phones, but to me, the phones are just too small. Like I've got I've got these games on my iPhone, and it's just like, microscopic. Maybe I'm just too old, and, and and my thumbs are too fat, but. I can't see anything, and my thumbs cover up half the screen when I'm on my phone. But when it comes to uh, when it comes to my tablet, it's a great experience. All right, that's it. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna try to set some scores here. Oh God, no! Damn it! Ah, I'm gonna try to set some high scores. See you next time, folks. Bye bye.